where the mighty Atlantic meets the graceful Arad in a country with an illustrious and glorious maritime history where the waves crash and the sprays soar, the second round of the UIM F1H20 season kicked off. The UIM F1H20 World Championship is in its 36th season as the Grand Prix of Portugal in Portimao marks the second stop in a season-long campaign to claim the most coveted title in world powerboat racing. Portimao is the European city of sport for 2019 and has become one of the standard and favorite stops on the UIM F1H20 Tour, having hosted the event 17 times starting in 1999. Situated in the Algarve region, this is one of the most spectacular corners of southern Portugal, a lively tourism destination with all the sun, sea and surf you can ask for. A historic fishing town, Portimao lives and breeds at one with the sea. The breathtaking coastline is overlooked by towering cliffs and rocky shores with sandy beaches that stretch out as far as the eye can see, attracting visitors year-round. Portimao also boasts some of the best golf links in the country and is famous for its fresh and delectable cuisine with seafood fresh out of the sea and onto the plate. The sardine dishes of this region are famous and there's a whole festival dedicated to them, filling the town's restaurants with visitors from all over Portugal and Europe. The crowds once again flock to the banks of the Arad River to take in the 18th UIM F1H20 World Championship Grand Prix of Portugal. Those who are brave enough have the chance to experience the thrill of being in an F1H20 boat firsthand with a ride in the UIM F1H20 two-seater where you can truly taste the thrill and excitement of F1H20 racing. The second round of 2019 kicks off in Portimao with 19 drivers from nine teams looking to post their first points of the season after the weather disrupted season opener in Dammam, Saudi Arabia. Dammam was a brand new venue on the tour where the 280th Grand Prix marked a return to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for the first time in 15 years. Thousands gathered to welcome back the UIM F1H20 Tour, fans flocking to meet and greet the drivers and teams and to get a look at the F1H20 boats up close. Unfortunately, the weather conditions made racing impossible, so the first actual racing of the year would be in round two in Portimao. Team lineups remain largely unchanged, save for one major exception, Eric Stark returns to the tour, rejoining Maverick F1 team, which has given Stark a way back into the championship for the second year in a row, after the Swedish driver joined Maverick F1 in the second round of 2018, rewarding the team with its first ever Grand Prix win in London, before Stark joined Team Abu Dhabi for the remainder of last season, challenging Sean Torrente for the world title and ending up world number two by just a four point difference. This is almost a recap from last year but uh, the difference from last year is uh, we got some more time to prepare ourselves. We test uh, two weeks ago home in Sweden so for sure this year I'm gonna try to win the championship this year. Now defending Grand Prix and world champion Sean Torrente has one more driver standing between him and a defense of his Grand Prix title in a field full of champions past and present. Yeah, I'm always excited to race good competition, but it's not just Stark, there's a bunch of them here. You know, Victory's been working hard for sure. And then you have Merritt, of course, and I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And then Shap and, and his teammate who came along. It's going to be a fight to get in the top six, and uh, I think we're ready. Torrente's Abu Dhabi teammate, Daniel Kamzi, is also a former champion here, having won in 2009, and is determined to win a second title in Portimao. All eyes will be on Portuguese team F1 Atlantic, which once again has local veteran Duarte Benevente leading the campaign alongside Italian teammate and 2019 rookie Alberto Comparato. Benevente looking to repeat his podium performance in 2017 when he came third with local support behind him. Team Amorovati's Jonas Anderson is keen to keep the momentum going to finally nab a championship with his new team colors racing alongside Eric Eden. 
It's a highly competitive field of former world champions in Portimao, including four-time world champion Alex Carrella victory team. Three-time world champion Philip Schiap of CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team, the Frenchman looking for a fourth victory in Portugal alongside his teammate world number four Peter Marin, and two-time world champion Sammy Celio of Sharjah team. Emirates Racing's Maritz Stromoy is also here in Portimao, where in 2011 she won her first pole position. The Grand Prix of Portugal was once again raced on the Arad River, a seven-pin circuit with one right-hander, tough river currents and tides to negotiate, and three 400-meter straightaways, the total course nearly two kilometers in length. Challenging like always here, and uh, there's not so big race what is causing the problem, but the wind is very strong, so it's catching the boat sometimes, and you need to be perfect balance and of course perfect setup to, to not to lift the throttle. UIM F1H2O drivers undergo a dunk test every season to ensure their safety so they know what to do in the case of a crash or an upturned boat. The Osprey rescue team took each driver through the procedure, simulating situations in which drivers need to think quick, avoid panic and follow the right steps to safety. The Rebellion official qualifying was contested over three sessions. The field reduced to 12 in Q1, then down to six in Q2. In Q3, the last six boats had the course to themselves with two laps each to lay down the fastest time in a bid for pole position. It was a disappointing morning for victory team as Ahmed Al Hamali crashed out in morning practice and he was unable to post a good enough time with the spare boat in Q1. His teammate Alex Carella also unable to make the Q2 cut. I don't know. If Big win, yeah, I don't have good props for the moment, let's see, I'm lost. <laughs> Sammy Celio was in fine form, posting the fastest time in the 15-minute session, although his teammate Philip Roms was out of the running in Q1. Behind Celio, Eric Stark was second fastest, but his Maverick F1 teammates Cedric de Guin and Beranger Robert were unable to make it into Q2. It was also a disappointing session for F1 Atlantic team as Duarte Benevente and Alberto Comparato suffered a string of technical issues. Benevente beaten to the Q2 cut by Blaze Performance driver Greg Foster. We have a small issue with the battery and you know the competition is so hard. As soon as you have a small issue uh, and you lose a little bit of performance, ciao. The second qualifying session was plagued by yellow flags due to drifting buoys, reducing the racing time considerably, adding pressure on the drivers. Maritz Stromoy made the most of it, playing the fastest time, but her Emirates racing teammate Bartek Marshalek was out in Q2. Yeah, it was, you know, two yellow flags during 20 minute session, it take away a lot of possibilities to catch clear water for a good lap, so. I will try my best tomorrow to get good punch from the pontoon and let's keep finger crossed for the race. American Greg Foster's good run ended in Q2 and his Blaze performance teammate veteran Francesco Cantando was also out. It's a strange situation for Portimao. I mean, you get uh, some windy sometimes, but like this, wow. Eric Stark was ready to set a very good time when the sweet power rolled out of the session, getting bumped down to seventh but not a bad start position if he can manage to get the boat up and running without an engine change. Eric Stark's barrel roll brought out another yellow flag as Sammy Celio was under pressure to get a good lap in, but the Finnish ace hit a buoy, and although he rushed back to get the buoy removed, he was out of time and out of Q3. And so the field was reduced to the final six boats in Q3. Maritz Stromoy, Tani Alkamzi, Philip Schiap, Sean Torrente, Jonas Anderson, and Peter Marin. Peter Marin was first out, solid run, laying a time of 43.92. That might not be enough for the Frenchman. He was beaten by the next man out, Jonas Anderson, who set a 43.13 lap time, and the Amaravati driver was pleased. It was not, uh, not very good, but not very shit. It was okay. 
the second one I lose the right hand that I uh, have problem to to set the ball. We didn't practice yesterday because many mistakes, so ah, it's okay. Sean Torrente was next out and he was on fire, posting a 42.58 second lap time on the second of his two laps around the 1.937 kilometer circuit, snatching provisional pole and setting the benchmark for the remaining drivers in Q3. It was pretty good. It wasn't perfect, but I don't know if anybody's going to get a perfect one. It's so The wind is so gusty, man. It just moves the boat around a lot. And the boat handles great. It's just moving it more than you expect. Either. Could Philip Schiap beat Torrente's time? He goes out all guns blazing. The CTI CF1 Shenzhen China driver gives it his all, but only manages 43.89. Torrente's Abu Dhabi teammate Daniel Kamzi next. He knows this circuit well. He was very fast, very tight on those turns. And look at that, 42.66. Almost, but not quite. He's just a tenth of a second off, but in second position with one driver left, Moritz Stromoy. Merritt's been fast. And uh, if she took it from me, honestly, it wouldn't hurt my feelings. I've taken it from her like four times. So I get it, but I still want it, man. I want it back. The Norwegian driver was fastest in Q2. Could she beat the field again in Q3? I think she get it. It was a good two runs, but not good enough. 42.86, still third place for Stromoy is good. Sean Torrente takes pole position again in Portimao. His teammate Alcamzi second and Moritz Stromoy third ahead of Anderson, Schiap and Marin. Yeah, man, we got the pole position. Um, it's our first race without Anthony Delpin. We lost him a month or two ago and uh, David, his brother, was, was nice enough to come and strap me in here. And um, that one's for him. Hopefully we can finish it tomorrow. the day's racing over, teams, drivers and their families and crew got a chance to wind down and enjoy some sumptuous Portuguese hospitality with Portimao welcomed the UIM F1H2O family to their town for the 17th time. First points of the year were up for grabs. Tough racing conditions expected on the day, with teams and drivers finishing last minute preparations ahead of the 48 lap race as they prepare to do battle on the strong tide and gusting winds of the Arad River. The Portimao circuit, always a stern test for drivers on the UIM F1H2O Tour. It will be an intense battle for two teammates in P1 and P2 as Torrente and Alcamzi renew their rivalry from last year. Trying to get through them from behind will be Moritz Stromoy in third. Yeah, normally Tani has a very good start and also Jonas in fourth. So uh, I just have to get a good start, get off the dock in a smooth and nice way. And then uh, we see what it takes us. But for sure, starting in third is a, is a good advantage. Last year I started like 15 here. So, so uh, I'm confident for, uh, for the race, confident for the start. Al Hamali has a tough road ahead, starting back in 17. <laughs> I'll start in 17, but I don't know how much I'm gonna forward. I'm gonna go forward. I mean, uh, the course is really small. Too many tough boats, strong. I mean, Eric Stark and his team worked up to the last seconds to get their boat ready. We find different things from the from the crash yesterday, and it was last last second and uh, it was very very short of time between the free practice and the, the race so uh, it feels everything feels good now but you never know you know it's a long race and uh, we see what i can do the starting grid torrente on pole with the inside lane advantage anderson charging up from fourth then Schiap and marin stark in seventh after his qualifying incident marshall like ninth Celio down in 10th with ground to cover to reach the upper ranks, Portuguese driver Benevente in 13th, and Alberto Comparato in 19th. The final seconds as the crowds and drivers hold their breath for the first race of the season. The final seconds, the race is on, 19 boats launch off the pontoon and into that crucial starting straightaway to the commitment buoy. Good start from Torrente, also a great start for Al Hamili and Robar as Philip Roms falls back between the two. Anderson keeping up with the team Abu Dhabi boats while Stromoy drops back, struggling in their spray. 
Peter Marin finds himself getting squeezed back by Sammy Celio. Marin struggling to keep up. Looking back from Schiaps on board, Celio then gets pushed back by Corella on the outside. Then they both get squeezed out by Al Hamili, who surges ahead, leading them in the spray. The Team Abu Dhabi boats firmly in the lead with Jonas Anderson giving chase. Look at Alberto Comparato in his first UIM F1H2 race coming up from last place to zoom up past Celio and then Corella. Comparato is on a rampage. He continues to rise up the field, overhauling Cedric de Guin and pulling up alongside Eric Stark, the Italian rookie, eight spots from 19th place. Peter Marin chases Ahmed Al Hamli, who's had a brilliant start moving up from 17th to 7th, going head to head with Cantando in 6th. Out in the lead, Torrente going strong, but being chased hard by his teammate Al Kamzi. Anderson in third, with Moritz Stromoy holding on to fourth, but with the pressure of Philip Schiap on her outside. Francesco Cantando in the yellow blaze performance boat, feeling the pressure from Ahmed Al-Hamili. It's been a dismal start for Corella and Celio, the pair languishing in 13th and 14th positions respectively, chased by Cedric de Guin of Maverick F1. As the leading triumvirate opened their lead over the rest of the field, Stromoy in fourth feeling the pressure from both Schiap and Cantando, can the Norwegian hold point? Despite falling back at the start, Peter Marin climbs his way back to pass Al Hamili on the port side to reclaim sixth position. Into the second lap, Moritz Stromoy goes a little wide on that turn, and Schiap senses his chance. He cuts in on the inside and snatches fourth place from the Norwegian. A gutsy and well-executed move from the Frenchman and three-time world champion. Sean Torrente extending his lead in this opening Grand Prix of 2019. He wants to start his world title defense with a win here in Portimao. Eric Stark, who dropped two spots at the start, now working his way back up as he zips past Al Hamili. The Emirati victory driver bumped down to ninth. Behind them, Polish driver Bartek Marszalek coming up fast from the rear. Marszalek has the speed and the Emirates racing driver also passes Al Hamili, who finds himself sinking further back to 10th. Eric Eden of Team Amaravati, who had dropped two spots at the start, is chasing Alberto Comparato, who is having an excellent start to his first race, showing no signs of nerves. Comparato has left two multiple world champions behind as he's chased by Corella and then Philip Roms, Greg Foster, and Sammy Celio. Torrente opens a 3.85 second lead over Alcamzi, with Anderson another three seconds back from Alcamzi, then Schiap in fourth, Stromoy fifth, and Peter Marin sixth, Stark back up in seventh ahead of Marshalek. Tough luck for Francesco Cantando, electrical problems forcing the Italian 12-time Grand Prix winner out in lap six. Meanwhile, the battle heats up for third position as Philip Schiap pushes on Jonas Anderson, seeing if he can find a way around the Swedish five-time Grand Prix winner, but Anderson fends off the Schiap challenge. Eric Eden's pace and persistence pays off in lap 11 as he finally gets past Ahmed Al Hamili, the victory driver finding himself back down in 10th as Eric Eden finds a space on the outside. More drama in the top five as Stromoy now finds Peter Marin working his way up beside her. Marin fast on the outside, but Stromoy shuts him out in the turn. Another disappointing end for Corella, who yet again fails to finish a race. This time his campaign dashed by a hole in his left sponson. Also out of the race is the sole remaining Blaze performance boat. Greg Foster retiring with engine issues as the field narrows further by lap 18. The string of breakdowns continues. This time it's Eric Eden who's unable to continue. Tough break for the Swede who was having a good run out there. Daniel Kamzi is closing that gap with race leader Torrente moving hard on his teammate. Torrente feeling the pressure from last year's world number three, trying to hold off his rival and teammate. Further back, Peter Marin continues to put pressure on Moritz Stromoy. The Frenchman is neck and neck with the Norwegian, but Stromoy holds on, again using that inside advantage, but Marin not letting up on her starboard. Marin pushes hard, gets some air, and that slows him a bit as Stromoy holds point in fifth, and Marin loses momentum. But just as Marin was focused on passing Stromoy, Eric Stark zooms up past him as if out of nowhere as a Maverick F1 racer moves up in sixth bumping Marin down to seventh. With the race passing the halfway mark, Al Kamzi continues to close that gap with Torrente to just 1.65 seconds. Now Stark threatening the top five, and he's the one chasing his former teammate and fellow Scandinavian, Moritz Stromoy. 
but Stromoy has momentum of her own as she overhauls Philip Schiap, who appears to be slowing. Schiap is out of the race. This time, it's a fuel injector issue as a string of bad luck continues from last year. With Xiap out, Morin represents CTICF1 Shenzhen China now as he continues to put pressure on Eric Stark, looking to regain the position he lost to the Swedish world number two a few laps back. Morin has excellent speed. He does it, gets past Stark on the outside there, moves up a position into fifth. Stark's woes continue as Bartek Marshalek then also passes him, the Polish driver bumping the Swede down another spot as he moves up to sixth. On lap 32, another boat is out. It's Philip Roms. In a battle for ninth position, Sammy Celio trying to find a way around the young upstart Alberto Comparato, who's proving he has more than what it takes to race in the premier power boating division. Comparato is ahead of his teammate Duarte Benevente, who struggles to find momentum, but hangs on in the race, hoping to at least be in the points with a top 10 finish. With just 10 laps left, Tani Alcamzi is putting the pressure on Torrente, whose lead is cut down to just half a second as the two Abu Dhabi boats continue to stand head and shoulders above the field in their battle for the Grand Prix of Portugal title here. Meanwhile, further back, Peter Marin's rise continues as he finally catches Moritz Stromoy and passes the Norwegian. Marin is in fourth now. With the race entering the final stages, it's an intense battle unfolding with just over five seconds separating the top six boats and it feels like the race could be anybody's for the taking. Stromoy does not give in. She's keeping Marin in her sights and behind her is her teammate Bartek Marshalek in sixth. Excellent performance from Emirates Racing Team with just six laps remaining. It's been a very solid race for Team Amaravati veteran Jonas Anderson, who finished on the podium in the last race of 2018, and he wants to keep the string of good results going into 2019. Up in the fight for the lead, Alcamzi is now just a boat's length behind his teammate Torrente as the battle heats up with a handful of laps remaining, the defending world champion trying to hold Alcamzi off, but Alcamzi going hard and strong. With no flags seen all race, this has really turned into a nail-biter with all drivers out there laying it all on the line. This is where experience, stamina, nerves and grit play a huge role. This race is showing that we are in for a season-long inter-team rivalry to savor as Alcamzi and Torrente lock horns in what has been a thrilling first encounter of the year. But the laps run out and Torrente hangs on to defend his Grand Prix title in Portimao. Sean Torrente is the 2019 Grand Prix of Portugal champion. Daniel Camzi once again runner-up. Anderson ends a fantastic race in third with Peter Marin just behind him in fourth and Stromoy bringing it home in fifth. Sean Torrente in a start to finish win, using his pole position advantage well, but it was not easy, feeling the pressure all race long from Alcamzi. In the end, just a second and a half was in it between Torrente and Alcamzi. Anderson never let up after seizing third from Stromoy at the start. Morin continued his fine form and consistency to finish fourth. Despite having some rough patches, Al Hamli should still be happy with seventh. What a result for newcomer Comparato with three points from his first ever race, beating such names as Stark, Celio, and Corella. Benevente just missing out on points in 11th. Deguin brings his boat in in 12th. Team Abu Dhabi pick up where they left off, leading the world team standings with that 1-2 finish. Amaravati in second, and Emirates Racing a well-deserved third to start the year ahead of CTIC F1 Shenzhen China fourth, Victory fifth, and F1 Atlantic sixth, then Maverick, Charger Team, and Blaze Performance. Well, it was a tough race because uh, the people behind, like Philip Schaap, Maureen, Marit, everybody is so fast. So it was really, really demanding work this today to finish the race in, in the podium because uh, to close them behind and then I push and get that small gap and then I was too close to Tani and uh, no, no, it was an incredible race. Yeah, I was uh, happy today for uh, my boat is uh, running very good in the rough water and windy condition. My team is working very hard uh, for get this boat ready and I push uh, hard for uh, my teammate Sean. Almost I catch him, but I'm happy today for finish second. Great start to the year for Torrente, 20 points in his title defense and it's already promising to be a very close fought UIM F1H2O season ahead.
I guess the first 20 laps, the boat was working amazing. I was lapping boats. I built up a seven second lead and I was kind of just pacing. I had a good pace going. And then I go down to the bridge corner and I hit the down. I fly past the corner and I'm like, what, what happened there? And then I start looking at the, the, the data and I realize the trim isn't working all the time. I was able to hang on and Tani knew I was wounded because our team knew I was wounded and he was coming. And I was just doing everything I could just to hang on to the damn thing and get it to the end. And thankfully I did and we finished one, two and man, it's like a dream come true again. Team Abu Dhabi manager Guido Capellini could not ask for more than a one, two race finish. As the UIM F1H2O flag is passed over to Evian France, see you at Lake Le Mans for round three.